Welcome back to HVAC Review. In this video, we're gonna be conducting an in-depth review of this Daikin Fit True Communicating Inverter System. And you're gonna understand why everyone is freaking out about this. What's shocking, that it's pretty much falls into the same price range as a regular single stage heat pump or air conditioner. As of right now, you will not find anything on the market like this that has a similar cost. But before we start, please note that Daikin did not sponsor this recording nor they provided us with free equipment. We're gonna pull the covers off and take a look at the components as we normally do. Some people might say that this system is too complex or they might say that we don't know much about it or they might say that it has limitations or it's a mini split condenser combined with the ducted air handler. Oh yeah. Are they right or are they wrong? We'll also slightly touch on the Daikin cloud system. Is it just a sales pitch or is it real? Now let's see if all the above is true or not. So this is a special moment and we have been waiting for this for a long time. When in reality, someone can purchase a true communicating inverter system like this for the cost of a regular single stage heat pump and air conditioner, more or less. Most of the subscribers on our channel are homeowners watching HVAC equipment review, but some of them are HVAC techs and those guys can be pretty tough when it comes to comments. Oh yeah. What do you think? How will these guys react to this review? <sighs> well, we all know how this is gonna go down. If the system is simply built, that's a problem. So if it's high tech, that's a problem. If it's a single stage, that's a problem. If it's a communicating inverter like this, that's also a problem. If it has a polypropylene capacitor, that's a problem. If it has electrolytic capacitor, that's a problem. If the EVAP coil is corrugated, that's a problem. <laughs> if it's not corrugated, that's a problem. If it's a 13 CR2, that's a problem. If it's a 21 CR2, that's also a problem. Regardless of what we put out there, it's always gonna be a problem. Yeah, pretty much. You've seen the thumbnail and you clicked on the right video. Not even very long ago, if somebody wanted a true communicating inverter system, they had to pay almost three times as much. Keep in mind, the price varies from job to job depending on the complexity of the install. Okay, so how about if Daikin runs specials on this? Then it's even cheaper. Hmm. A while back, we posted a video about explaining the difference between a least expensive conventional regular system versus a true communicating inverter system like this. That price difference left people shocked. If you scroll through the comments, you're gonna be able to see how the public related to the price difference between the two. Everyone seemed to like the concept. However, not very many people agree with the price. By the way, what does Daikin mean in Japanese? It's like, Great sum of money, great deal of money, great value of money, something like that. A bunch of synonyms. It's interesting, by the way. So to begin with, a heat pump or air conditioner needs to cool and heat. It needs to dehumidify, especially in humid climates, also called latent capacity. If it does not dehumidify in humid climates, the sooner or later, your house will smell really bad and you will be sticky. And it's gonna feel a lot warmer than what the temperature really is. It needs to ventilate, in other words, moving the air around. If it doesn't move the air around, especially in humid climates, your house sooner or later will smell like your basement. And one more thing, which is very important, it needs to clean the air. Now remember these four principles. The four principles. The system needs to cool or heat, move the air around, dehumidify, and clean the air. A single stage, a two stage, or a non-communicating inverter will put a limit on dehumidification, ventilation, and air filtration. This system doesn't like to turn off. It wants to run. It is designed to run as much as possible. And this system will dehumidify better, move the air on better, and clean the air better. Hang on, you skipped one. What? It also prevents temperature swing. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's my bad, sorry. The result will leave you with the much better air quality. It's also much more efficient because it only uses the bare minimum power to maintain the set temperature. Basically, it only ramps up in capacity when it needs to. The dehumidification function can be adjusted through the thermostat settings to make this system compatible with all climates. Now let's get into humid climates a little bit. States with high humidity often have above normal levels of indoor VOCs especially if you have impact windows or a tightly sealed house. And that's because the windows and doors are closed most of the time and it's not allowing fresh air into the house. If the homeowner opts for VOC tests, we always warn our clients that it's gonna come back higher than the national average. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of VOCs, you can combine this air handler 
with a premium air cleaner. It's a room temperature catalyst that's known to catch VOCs, odors and fine particles. Now let's pull the panels off and see what's inside. As you guys can see, the panels are off. There's something super important here that people need to know about. We have a strainer right here. Super tiny. And then there's one right here. Yes, this one and that one. So never by any means ever braze these units in without using nitrogen. Without using nitrogen. You will clog up these strainers in a heartbeat. Look how tiny they are. For this reason, what we like to use, we like to use a regulator. So if you have it in this position, it's off. It's, it's difficult. This position is, uh, so you can put it on purging like this. And if you turn this knob, this is brazing. So that will provide a steady, constant nitrogen flow so you don't have any contaminants inside the copper line set. H2L sensor right here. And you might have to relocate the sensor if you flip the air handler with the horizontal position. Correct. Here's your EEV. Up here on the top, we have our pressure sensor. And then we have a temperature sensor inside there. Here we have a NIDEC variable speed motor. Up here, we got a communication board. This is where you hook in your wires. You're going to have a red in common, that's your 24 volts, and then one or two is gonna be your communication. That's it, only two, two wires, for four wires. Right here we have two low voltage transformers. One of them is strictly for your EEV, the other ones are for your control. Full aluminum coil here, three rows of bins. So inside the cabinet here, if you look, the insulation is nice and tight. The strength of the cabinet is a lot more sturdier than 10 years ago. That's. That's definitely true. Yes. We, we noticed that they got heavier too. Now here's the condenser. High voltage hookup here, L1 and L2, and it's separated from your communication board here, and you have this protective layer here. Here's where you hook up your communication. Just two wires, that's it. That's it, pretty straightforward. Yes. Yeah. This right here is your D-checker, and it plugs right into there. Into that port. And this sends all the information over to your tablet, laptop, whatever you want, phone. Very useful tool. You have your low pressure sensor. And this is also digital. So this low pressure sensor right here operates on five volt DC voltage. Inside here, that's your suction temperature sensor. You have your liquid temperature sensor. So we have two boards in here. We have your communication board and then your inverter board here. And on this particular model, this is a DC6. This has a heat sink on here. But the higher tonnage ones, they'll have a cooling loop, a refrigerant cooling loop on them to cool the inverter board. Yeah, I put it on the screen so you guys can see it. I can double up the coils, double layer here, as you can see. Yeah, the bigger the coil, the better. Here we have a noise reducing composite fan blade here. This thing is a monster, it moves a ton of air. Variable speed, condenser fan motor, outdoor temperature sensor, constantly monitors ambient temperature. One of the greatest features of these Daikin Fit systems is they have a communication boost. So you can change these settings on these dip switches, DS7 on the indoor unit. Let's show this which real is quick. inside here. And then the DS1 right here on the condenser. Yeah, you flip those two switches, one set of switches, dip switches in the air handler, one set in the condenser, and then it boosts the communications. And this is huge because, let's say you get a building that was built in the 1980s, right, with old wires. Yeah. And then now you have, you know, often run into communication problems with inverters. Right. And this is the solution that Daikin came up with. So Daikin has a rotary swing compressor instead of just a normal rotary compressor. There are many benefits associated with that. Another great feature that Daikin has is the boost mode. So the boost mode allows the compressor to operate at a higher RPS, revolutions per second, than factory maximum. So this system is also compatible with zoning. So when it comes to super, super humid climates, this system has an advanced dehumidification function. However, if you live in a dry climate, this system is also compatible with humidifiers.
As we mentioned before, that this is the straight cool version. It's called the DC6. It ranges from 18.5 CR2 to 16.2 CR2, depending whether you get a two-ton version or a five-ton version. The DC9 is the more efficient version of the Daikin fit. I put it on the screen here, and it's coming in 19 CR2 to 17 CR2, again, depending on the tonnage. Um, now let's talk about the heat pump versions. They range from 19 CR2 to 16. CR2, again, based on tonnage, they also come in half ton increments, just like this. It basically looks the same. Yes, just the heat pump version. Yes. Now the D87VS version of these guys are the enhanced heat pump versions. They range from 19 to 17 CR2. The Daikin Aurora, the DH9, is a low ambient version. Now those guys can handle low temperatures down to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty impressive, super high tech. And that's gonna be our next review. As we mentioned before, the techs have the option of using the D-Checker or the Daikin Cloud. I also wanna note that the basic diagnostics, such as pressures, subcooling, superheat, are all accessible through the Daikin One thermostat. And that's an incredibly good feature. Yeah, no gauges, no manifold. You know, you wanna check pressures, yeah. go to the thermostat, make sure everything's good. Yeah. Now, HVAC companies like us, getting these calls all the time from customers, especially with new installs. Hey, I think that something's wrong with my system. You know, they under the impression that the heat pump or the air conditioner is not cooling or heating, you know, because I think your crew did something wrong. Right. Yeah. It's not working like my old one used to. You know, they just concerned. People concerned, right? It's a new system, new install, very evasive, and they totally concerned. Yeah. And they want you to go back and, and check it out to make sure that everything's good. Yeah, to give them peace of mind. Yes. So when it comes to something like this, we are fortunate because we run calls in a densely populated area. But for example, Howard Binder and his crew might travel two hours in one direction up in the Colorado mountains just to get there. Just to tell the customer that everything is okay with your system. Exactly. I can figure this out. Through the Daikin cloud system, the dealer can remotely monitor the system's performance. It can read air codes, system status, live data, and perform various tests. And that's absolutely impressive because this can filter out misunderstandings and potentially save huge on unnecessary service calls. On these type of service calls, every HVAC company loses. Daikin offers 12-year parts warranty, and the customer has the option to purchase either six or 12 years labor warranty. Now, sometimes the dealer will go ahead and include the labor warranty into the price of the system. Now, when it comes to part supply, this system here, for example, is assembled in the United States, and they operate the massive Daikin technology part. Now, the part supply is superior for sure. They are present in every single state. We get two supply houses within 60 miles from our warehouse. So what's the conclusion? I honestly think that Daikin is cornering the market. You know, again, a true communicating inverter on a price of a single stage or something close, right? No matter what angle you look at it. When we talk about price, warranty, part supply, performance. Even making sure the companies are prepared and training them sufficiently. Properly trained. 16 hours of training. Yeah. Nobody gets the equipment unless you go through on the training. Correct. And that's huge. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and this is how it should be because bad install crews, they cause so much damage to the reputation of brands. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. So, Chris, you had something to say about the refrigerant? Yeah. Uh, Daikin's basically the only one that went with R32. Yeah. Um, everybody else went with R454B. And we've seen the shortages with that and the struggle that uh, different manufacturers have had with the 454B. Oh yeah, there's a huge shortage right now. This can change at any time, yeah. but we, you know, R32 is also a single molecule refrigerant. Yeah, single molecule refrigerant, no temperature glide. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch our next review about the Daikin Aurora. We really like the engineering of that one and the price was great also. It's a high efficiency, low ambient heat pump. It's huge.